Hello, today we are talking about the top 10 medicines that we employ in our household to keep us well. Number one, ritual, ceremony and love. Mm. The point of ritual and ceremony for us is to connect uh, either with each other or ourselves independently if it's a ritual that we're doing alone. Uh, certainly as a couple, the morning rituals that we have, um, which you might want to talk about in a minute, mm -hmm. and um, ceremony with bigger groups, coming together with bigger groups to honour country, to honour um, our connection with one another and with more than human consciousness. And yet yeah, the love that springs from that, to feel love, to, to, to pass love on and to receive it back is a number one medicine for us. I also, when I think about ritual and ceremony, I also feel like we haven't, this hasn't been a priority for us until quite recently that what has been a priority is everything else up until this point. A shelter that, that is, has been retrofitted and that represents our values and how we adapt to where we live. Good food, community gardens, food in the ground, foraging knowledges, systems of barter and gift exchange put in place things like that that have really taken priority and now that that part of our household is in order then we can add the flourishes mm. of the gratitude for every moment for every relationship for being present mm. and last week we held a harvest ceremony and celebration in the garden uh, and about 90 people uh, joined us and we had a wonderful band called Hello Tut Tut. The whole night was a kind of magic that um, was enabled by the ritual and ceremony at the beginning that then opened up to, to the party and the celebration um, emerging later in the evening. have these ceremonies that are in a long lineage of ceremonies that have been held on this country for thousands of years to honour the seasons, to honour the harvest, to, to share the abundance when there is abundance with community. Mm -hmm. That really felt like a kind of coming home for all of us. And a big part of the ritual was the honouring of country and the honouring of the food and all the human and more than human entities that have contributed to the food. Um, so that aspect of, of honouring and the embodying together collectively gratitude uh, for the abundance of the food table, everybody brought a potluck of their harvested food. Some of that harvest is out of skip bins. Much of it has come from people's gardens or from a foraging commons. One of the biggest killers in industrialised cultures is stress and just love as an antidote to stress. And alongside stress is also alienation and isolation, which is also a, a big killer. Finding your way into a place where you can have social connection particularly but also place connection connection to country um, these are the things that uh, ground us which is the next mm. our next medicine is bare feeting or earthing or grounding keeping these naked wonderful parts of our bodies on the ground or even in a tree, we're still, we're still earthing when we're... Mm -hmm. Even if we're wearing shoes and just hugging a tree, we're still getting the benefits. What actually is happening between the negative ions and the earth and our electrical 
bodies. It just feels when we're not feeling grounded, we we need to ground. It, mm. You know, feet on the earth. It, it's such a simple, yeah, just in terms of um, getting rid of inflammation in our bodies and it's good for our immune systems. I mean, of course, the relationship between our bodies and the earth is going to be... Mm is going to be good for us in the same way that yeah. vitamin D from the sun is good for us. It's mm. so fundamental. And just to have lost our way as a culture from those very, very basics mm. just you know, speaks to the disconnection that we see all around us. As bioelectrical and biomic and microbial beings, the more outside we are, the more earthed, the more sunlit we are, the less domesticated we are. Another way of um, de-domesticating, becoming a little wilder, is cold water immersion. We've made a video about our process of that and um, there's a lot on the internet about cold water immersion. So we won't go into it in big detail here, but one of the things cold water does for me is it gives me a temperature range of, of being able to handle a much greater diversity of temperatures. And so as we go into the winter, as we are now, we sit in cold water every morning around dawn and accept the cold. And there, even though that water is kind of domesticated in our water tanks and sitting in this old tank, um, it has lost a little of that um, electrical and nitrogenous um, intensity but the, in cold water itself there's wildness there's an undomesticating going on and also to start the day by taking off our clothes yeah by and being just, outside yeah, being outside having our feet kiss kiss the earth mm. and to do that together too it's sort of it's i guess this is the integration between the ritual, the, the gratitude to start our day, the wildness, the good for our immunity, it's the activation of our parasympathetic nervous system. When you go out into the garden, or you're in the garden when it's raining, and there's this different feeling in the air, on the ground, all around us, it's a kind of magic by starting the day with this beautiful, intimate ritual of acceptance and full immersion in, in the day. To start, to start that way, it's a kind of magic. And the, the magic continues as we become more robust to temperature ranges because we're less frightened of the cold and we're more robust and more resilient to the cold. And that's to do with the conversion of ordinary fat into brown fat. And also just the building of resilience for, you know, when mm. crappy things happen in the day, mm. it's like, oh well, yeah. <laughs> you know, we've done something pretty hard, especially when we need to crack the ice, although yeah. there's definitely joy in that. But again, it's the, it's the pleasure and the pain, it's the joy with the challenges. Mm. Yeah, starting the day with such a, a big challenge of getting into a cold bath outside exposed to the coldness of the night when as you say when we start the day with such you know a five minute ritual of acceptance and challenge then what is what comes at us through the rest of the day is actually very much more manageable and then there's the delicious reward of being in front of the fire mm. with you in the nude, drinking tea mm. and reading mm. the day before's journal entry to one another. Mm. That just feels like a delicious reward <laughs> for, mm. the, for mm. the discomfort. And also, yeah. yeah, I feel like we need to talk a little bit about discomfort mm. and inviting that inviting that into our lives yeah. and also witnessing doing it together and witnessing each other's acceptance of this discomfort mm. next on our list is walking for our food and whether it's in the garden or foraging in the commons or further afield is a really important part of our procure our food procurement when we have that 
walked for relationship with the food that we pick, there are so many interrelationships and sharing food um, and sharing culture uh, is sharing ecology and so foraging and walked for food gives us um, not just a hand to mouth direct relationship with food but a a direct relationship with um, the ecologies in which that make our lives possible and so there's a gratitude in that there's a there's a a magic in that and to keep <clears throat> to ensure that we have lots of wild undomesticated foods in our diet keeps us robust mm. speaks to the wildness in us that we're constantly trying to cultivate and keep in balance with the domestic which we also love the Hadza people in Africa their gut microbiomes are so diverse compared to domesticated urban modern subjects of capital and the reason for that is that when they butcher an animal they're using all the parts all the internal organs of the animal all the every aspect of the food is not wasted and within all of those parts of that particular animal there are different microbes that are, are then being con um, consumed it's also a seasonal diet it's a very diverse plant animal and fungi diet and so um, these are the things that uh, have been reduced through industrialization is our hand connection to food um, because uh, microbes from moss and bark and rock and soils different soils everywhere all have a um, all have their own microbial um, uh, realms and so we don't just feed our gut microbiome through our mouths we actually feed our gut microbiome or our body microbiomes through what we touch from the air we breathe the water that we soak in so if we think of ourselves as walking living biomes connected to other biomes then um, we develop um, much more uh, diversity in in our uh, microecology and to see each act of walking and relating and touching as communing with the world and that to give our attention and be present and to be to be witnessed by by the world too just what a what a, a, a gift that is yeah picking bitter greens such as sow thistle or um, dandelion um, gives us and we only need a few leaves a day to give us the bitters that we need in our diet which alleviate the cravings for more acidic foods such as sugar or rich a, a, a diet that's high in sugars which is the industrial diet so by taking in these medicine plants dandelion leaves and sour thistle leaves have deep nutrition and great for liver support particularly for the bitters so to have these walked for medicine plants herbs in our diet is also very much part of our medical tool toolkit so is the next one on our list which is sleep mm -hmm. particularly breathing through our noses while we sleep mm -hmm. so we tape our mouths every night one of the things we have noticed by doing that over the last several years is that we don't wake up with dry mouths and dry mouths through breathing through your mouth uh, dries out all the luscious microecology beneficial bacteria that keep um, decay at bay we also we try to as much as we can go to sleep when the sun goes down and to wake up pre-dawn or at dawn and just to get our bodies into that circadian rhythm and the amber light lighting we have in our house and no blue light screens um, and limiting internet or screen time is really important as well so 
the breathing through the nose, training, training our bodies for the several hours we're sleeping to breathe through our nose. Um, is, our nose is a much better filtration system um, than our mouths. Our mouths are a secondary, like a gulping, almost panic place to breathe from, not it shouldn't be a, a primary place. So yeah, sleeping, good sleep hygiene, no blue light, um, winding down early to bed, taping mouth, um, and also we sleep uh, separately because I used to wake Meg a lot. When Woody was a baby, we did attachment parenting. And co-sleeping. Co-sleeping, uh, and that is really important. For we adults, it's actually really important to have our rituals of going to bed. We have different patterns, and one of the, the richest things for our relationship has been to actually have separate spaces to sleep. Next thing on our list is, again, related to our mouths, and that is fasting. Mm. So we both, we do it differently. Um, I skip breakfast and go straight to lunch. So my first meal of the day is at one o'clock. And I used to count my hours to make sure that I had 16 hours of non-eating a day, but then it was usually around one o'clock. So now I just, no matter what time I finish eating, and I do try not to eat just before bed. And that's another thing to do with sleep hygiene but I like to eat at uh, one o'clock. And on a day like today, it's not so bad, but on some days I'm really, really struggling and I just try to drink uh, lots of uh, herbal teas on those mornings. Mm. And you? Yeah, so I do intermittent fasting from time to time, but I'm also very physical in the morning. I'm usually chopping wood or farming and I get very hungry and hyperglycemic so I trust my body so I usually eat around um, 10 o'clock um, and I stop eating around 8 o'clock at night so I'm not doing the full 16 hours but what I do do at least once a year is to do a four-day fast where I go out into the forest for four days and only take water a blanket and a sleeping bag and um, really do a deep listening, a visual. Um, people call it a vision quest. I call it deep listening quest. And to really use mm. that non-eating time to just completely empty out yeah. and be filled with whatever comes to you. Yeah. And, yeah, the, the emptying out of toxins, the emptying out of, of energy um, and fuel to see really what lies in the soul it's often often hard but there are gifts and magic that comes through that difficulty mm. i feel like we've touched a bit on the next point already which is a homegrown food mm. direct contact food yeah. and for a family like ours that's low income we would like to eat non-chemicalized organic food as much as possible and so therefore it makes sense for us to grow our own food and I guess there's a big backstory to that which is really prioritizing our time over our money so being time rich and cash poor so we do have time to walk for our food to grow our food to to be in relationship with the soils and have time to preserve for the winter time and share the excess. Mm. There's a particular bacteria in the soil. Um, I forget the species name. I'll try to find it and put it in the notes. And it is uh, significant in all the world's soils. And gardeners know this happy soil feeling. It's, it's almost like a serotonin, a natural serotonin when you um, when you tend the earth, when you cultivate the earth uh, on a small, intimate um, scale. Plus you're getting the earthing benefits of that yeah, as well. Yeah, you're getting the earthing benefits, absolutely. Um, and then you're getting the organic food um, that is not um, contaminated with pesticides. And a relationship to your food 
is a relationship to soil and a relationship to soil necessitates or brings forward a deep gratitude for country, for Mother Earth, for Mother Country. So there is this sort of cycling that happens by eating food that you tend um, at a microbial, bioelectrical, through the, the contact with the earth, but also because we um, compost our manure as we're the largest mammals in our biome. And that very safe, mature compost goes back into our soil, so we close the poop loop. So we are eating and returning, eating and returning, um, and that feels, now that we're not fecophobes and we're fecophiles, it feels um, really essential and vital to the feedback that is happening between our biomes and the soil biome. Our next medicine is eating lots of wild fermented food. Mm. And it's really good to have a diversity of probiotic rich wild fermented foods in our diets. The benefits of probiotic rich food for our, our gut microbiome and just the, the conversation that happens along the gut brain axis mm. and how fermented foods are so essential to keep those pathways open, opening and, and flourishing. And fermentation, of course, holds up decay. So it um, extends the life of our food so that we can continue not only value add our food in terms in a medicinal sense, but actually extend the life of it so that we can be eating the fruits of summer and autumn through the, the winter and into the spring when there isn't much food around late winter early spring so yeah this is a way of extending the life of our food and adding in medicinal properties that we need in winter and early spring when it's still cold and wet and we haven't been outside as much fermentation can really uh, assist our immune system and keeps us tethered to death Mm. And yes, it prolongs the life of our food, but in that prolonging, is in, we're in constant relationship with decay and dying. Yeah. And I feel like that's also keeping us close to our own mortality. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And again, <clears throat> it brings wildness into our home and into our yeah. guts by wild fermenting and not getting packet um, lab-made yeah, yeasts and, and bacterias um, yeah, not putting that into our food, but actually courting, courting the wild microbes that are in our home, around our home, in our skins. Mm. If we're making sauerkraut, really just getting in there and just using our hand, hands, not putting gloves on or anything like that. And the same with all the wild fermented raw milk cheeses you make. And there isn't a kitchen in our home of sterility. It's sometimes one of pasteurization. Mm. But generally, it's all of life is welcome. It's just knowing how to um, dance with microecology in order to wild ferment, um, rather than sterile, sterilize and separate and um, create a surety uh, while losing wildness and feralness from our diet. Our next medicine on the list is having a sauna. Mm. So a number of years ago, Patrick built a very small wood-fired sauna in the corner of our little permaculture plot and we crank that up throughout the colder months and it's next to our plunge plunge tank so we go from the the heat to the cold from the fire to the water the fire to the water and really letting our bodies detoxify and then shedding them into the water and then repeating the process and so in the winter when we are sweating out toxins that ordinarily we'd sweat out in the summer by working or walking or um, work being more physical in our green gym lifeways that is uh, neo-peasantry. Having the sand on the floor is again we're earthing while sweating while detoxifying. And so that's it's also sand floor is like super cheap. Um, in fact, the whole cookhouse was built for about $300. The root of the, the word 
Humility is also the root for humus. Which leads us to our last medicine. So we have humility and humus mm. and human, humanness. And I guess the umbrella term for that is meaning making mm. and meaning remembering and meaning reclaiming. Mm. And for us to remember ourselves as creatures, as creaturely, as as creatures of place, that's a really big part of our medicine and our well-being. So that's our top 10 medicines in a nutshell. In no particular order. We'd love to hear what yours are. Please uh, leave us in the comments below. What do you do to keep well, to keep out of the hospital system? We've experienced the health benefits of all of these things. And of course, science is based on our experience and what we come to learn and understand in our own lives. Thanks for listening and sending love from Jarrah Mother Country over and out for today. Holding you, mother's blue, carried down the mountain's new.